Three months ago, my wife Jenna was Instagram fit. By that I mean with the right location, lighting and pose, she'd end up with a couple of photographs perfectly sufficient to annoy her mother when I put them up on here. But if she'd had to actually push her body physically, she would quickly discover that her muscles, her heart, her lungs, they'd not got the memo that fitness was now just about how you look. They were still working on the old fashioned idea, it was about what you could do. But a lot has happened in the last three months and in this video I'm going to cover how training, eating, even resting with more focus and effort than she has ever applied before has changed her. Is she faster, stronger? Is she in the sense that really matters, fitter? I'll answer that and more. I'll even be asking her how does she feel about where she's now at and as a mother forgive me yet. I'm kidding, I won't ask her that, that's a no. So a 60 second recap. From my mid 30s to now, almost 50, I've been on a journey from fat to fit and then spent the last few years seeing what I could do with that fitness while still leading a reasonably normal life. However, while I often talk about the early part of my transition where the bulk of my weight loss occurred and my introduction to exercise began, that time predated anything I was putting up on here. So I thought it would be interesting to document Jenna going on a journey from beginner to no longer a beginner so that you would have an opportunity to see the progress that somebody can make when they first start to train and exercise. But rather than just give Jenna the slightly goalless motivator of work out so I can film you, I decided to ask her to compete alongside me in the doubles version of an event I've already done myself solo. That High Rocks Multi Fitness event takes place later this year. So not only could we now track her improvements in physical ability, we can also see how somebody with no competitive sporting experience at all will take to entering a world of start lines and finish lines and everything that comes in between them. If you've not already seen it, I suggest you watch the video that I will link to. That's the one we shot three months ago and it established a bunch of baseline measurements for Jen as she was then. So today I'm going to summarize what her training has looked like over those last few months and then run through a bunch of comparisons looking at then and now to see what if any improvements have been measured or can be seen. I also have a bunch of questions that you've asked me to put to Jenna and we'll wrap up by getting her to answer those. But first let me just touch on something that got raised a few times following the last video. Basically people said that Jenna was unsuitable for this before and after comparison because she was already an above average athlete or at least had above average physical ability. What people really mean when they say that she is already above average is that she's not fat. Now that is a valid criticism of this process to some extent because statistically most people are. Jenna might not have had a history of exercise and training at the start of this year but her low body fat levels meant that she was one step ahead when it came to confronting something, anything from catching Covid to running for a bus to starting a long training program. If I documented my own journey over the first three months because I was grossly overweight back then, it would really have not consisted of much more than me staggering around the streets late at night in the dark trying to jog hoping nobody would see me. I lost weight during those first few months and got bitten by the running bug but I would not have been able to make the sort of leaps that Jenna has made. However, just because she did not have to overcome a significant weight loss hurdle that might be the first hurdle for many, it did not mean that the other hurdles that a beginner has to deal with were not laid out in front of her. So what does her training look like? I've got to admit it, extensive is what it's looked like. I have my own High Rocks training program that's set for me by my coach and I then add on to that with all sorts of other bits and pieces that I want to just be doing for fun. So maybe riding the bike on Zwift, maybe having a little row down Ego River and anything else I just think might be fun to do for the channel. But I've had many times where we've gone to the gym together and I'll have finished what I need to be doing there and Jen is still going on the program that's been set for her by her coach Jade Skillin. She has been thrown in at the deep end it is fair to say. I'm not going to do her training in detail here, we'll probably do a day of training type video soon that documents that. But suffice to say, I'm amazed she stuck with it. She regularly leaves the gym exhausted. I should add, not too exhausted because the program is carefully designed to avoid that, but still exhausted. Now in amongst that training, she has done a few days where she's dipped her toe into being pushed the way she might come the High Rocks race, both physically and mentally. The first of those was when we went to London and had our VO2 max score measured by running on a treadmill until failure. A simple summary of that day was that I absolutely loved it, felt like I was in Rocky 4. 
but Jen hated every second of it, so she'd rather be watching Rocky V. No rings, I'd say. Interestingly, she came away with a not particularly bad VO2 max score, almost certainly helped by having a genetic predisposition to a good cardiovascular ability, even if it's not something she'd ever tried to capitalise on, and a low body weight. VO2 max is a measurement per kilogram of body weight. Having extra weight that doesn't contribute towards your fitness will simply lower that score. But ultimately, that day really did show that people suggesting she's already a reasonable athlete were way off the mark. She ran on that treadmill at close to a 34 minute 5k pace, and before the relatively short test was even completed, she gave up physically and mentally, much like a beginner might be expected to do. So what we took away from that day was that she needed to focus on pushing beyond the point where she was thinking she was done. As you'd expect, for somebody with no experience of training hard, she really didn't know where her limit was. And credit to her, the next time she had to push herself outside of a training environment, she was a different person. We entered a Spartan obstacle course race, Jen running in the competitive age group category that most people go into after running in the non-competitive open waves. It was Jen's first ever Spartan and she did amazingly, not only with regards to her fitness where she was doing things that a few months ago she'd simply not be able to do, but also with regards to her mental attitude, literally conquering obstacles with nothing but grit and determination. And then most recently we went and completed a high rock simulation. So that involved, just like the race we're going to do, eight one kilometer runs broken up with eight separate exercises between each one. Because we're going to be racing in the mixed doubles, we shared those exercises between us. It was only a simulation, so not an official time in any sense, but we completed it in an hour 16, which would have put us a couple of minutes inside the top half of all mixed doubles at the last UK race in London way above where we thought we'd be at this stage, and more than anything, highlighted Jen's improvement in fitness and self-belief. Again, she was tackling challenges that would have just seemed impossible a short time ago. It means that we are going into the High Rocks race in October with zero expectation of getting anywhere near the leaders, but I'm really confident that we are going to be mixing it up right in the middle of the pack, and determined to come out above average, which would be absolutely amazing. But before I drag her in here to discuss her own thoughts on where she's at, let's look at some accurately measurable changes that have occurred since we started this. So let's start with Parkrun. It was the first competitive event that I started with all those years ago, and so only fitting that we use it as something of a benchmark for Jen's progression here. And if you're somebody that does park runs and so is now yelling at the screen, park runs not a race, I understand, but they give you a time and they give you a finishing place. So if you want to regard it as a competition, even if only against yourself and your previous times, you are as free to do so as the people wanting to walk it at the back and just chat amongst themselves about the price of hummus at Waitrose. They're of course free to do that instead. So three months ago, Jen ran her third park run of her life and got a 29 minute, 28 second result. And considering up to that point, Jen had only run eight times this whole year, with those runs averaging a kilometre and a half, basically around the block with the dogs, to get under 30 minutes on your third park run is a huge achievement. It took me an awful lot longer than three goes to get myself there. Now I'm no sports science expert, but my belief is that her predisposition to good aerobic fitness and a low body weight just enables her to travel across the ground a bit quicker than somebody without those things in their favour would ever be able to do at her stage. That said, while what she inadvertently brings to the table lets her leapfrog the experience that I had of running 42, 43 minute runs and having to work my way down over many months to get to 30 minutes, it doesn't make her a great runner. It's still not even the average pace across all park runners. Bottom line, come the zombie apocalypse, she's in the weakest half of all people and probably getting bit. She wouldn't because she's with me, but if she annoyed me one day and I left her alone in the woods, nothing but her 29 minute park run and spear throwing skills to save her. Oh, it's not looking good. Now what we don't actually have is a bang up to date park run result because things have just got in the way of getting to one on a Saturday morning. But we did one about six weeks ago when Jen ran a 27.13. Now ignoring the fact that the pace she's currently training at at the moment in the gym indicates she'd probably be looking at getting into the 26s now, maybe even sub 26. That jump from 29, 28 to 27, 13 is still huge. No need to practice spear throwing, which is good, but it highlighted something that beginners tend to suffer from, which is a complete lack of understanding as to how huge their improvements are 
when they're still not where they want to be. For example, Jen's got a personal target to be able to comfortably run sub 25 minutes for a park run, 22, 23 minutes, something like that. So to her, 27 plus, that's still a long way from there and she can't really visualize ever getting to 22 minute runs. It just seems impossibly fast to her at the moment. Yet in a matter of weeks, she's just not two minutes off her time. A jump that's just massively unsustainable. If it were sustainable, by the end of the year, she's running sub 20 minutes and by next summer, she probably holds the world record. So something we have to work on is the occasional reality check to remind her that even small jumps and improvement are massive achievements because you don't need to have to multiply them by many weeks or months of training to see them lead somewhere that right now you just think is beyond you. And the same then happened on the bike. So next up was a ramp test that we conducted on Zwift just a few days ago. This is an interesting one because Jen does not use the Wahoo kicker bike at all, or indeed any bike. Do not be fooled by her expensive Italian cycling clothing and fancy pants shoes. Those are evidence of nothing more than why you shouldn't get somebody lovely gifts to go with their new hobby until you establish that they will actually be doing that hobby. Jen rode the kicker bike on Zwift when I bought it a couple of years ago now about three times before deciding she would rather not spend her evenings trying to race strange men that were getting hot and sweaty in their spare room clad in lycra surrounded by motivational wall art. So because she doesn't use the bike nor has any cycling as part of her training the only reason we expected to see an increase in her functional threshold power FTP was her general fitness going up or perhaps her ability to push herself harder and the result was much like the park run in that she went from 118 watts to 128 watts. Again, a result that she still perceives to be quite low while ignoring it's a 10% jump. If you're a cyclist that works hard to develop your own FTP, you'll know a 10% jump would be an absolute delight. And not only an increase in FTP, but also a definite increase in how hard she was prepared to push. Because after that test, she was on the deck for a long time, which is exactly where you should be after any hard cycle ride. Ah! Then, a day or so ago, we jump into the gym and onto the rowing machine. Now, in our mixed doubles high rocks race, Jen won't be doing any of the row. It's only a strong point of mine, so it just makes no sense for us to waste time swapping over on the machine to give her a go. It's better she just uses that time for recovery. But she's racing solo in January's high rocks, so she needs to be able to row, and it's part of her training. At the start of this process, her one kilometer row time was a four minutes 27. It is now seven seconds faster. There is no question by the time she jumps on a rower at high rocks in January, she'll be capable of rowing, at least in the gym, a sub four minute 1K. While we're in the gym, we then rattled through her maximum lifts and again, compared them to last time. So her squat was up from 40 to 50 kilos. That's a 25% increase. Her shoulder press up from 22 kilos to 27.5, another 25% increase. Her deadlifts, up from 60 to 65 kilos, an 8% increase, and her bench press, 35 kilos before, now 35 kilos, 0% improvement whatsoever. To be fair to Jen, the bench was the last thing we did in the gym on that day, so she was pretty fatigued. There's also not a huge amount of bench press or press training in high rock sessions, it's just not something massively important to the event. And also, I'm hardly one to talk about impressive bench pressing. No. So almost across the board increases in strength and some of those percentage increases really highlighting the joy of getting newbie gains and also starting from a low point. I get a load of messages from people telling me they've just started training and how disappointed they are in their low numbers, whether it's their running times or the weights they're lifting. And I tell them, good, rubbish starting numbers means nothing more than ridiculous levels of improvement are coming your way. As we've done with Jen's numbers, you should work out the percentage increase that you're getting and then multiply that forward. You will quickly realize that either what you think are small changes are actually too big to possibly continue with, or you're off to the Olympics in two years. Right, pictures and measurements, but let's get Jen in here so that A, I'm not weirdly looking at photographs of her on my own, and B, we can welcome back the highly popular interview segment from the last video. Welcome back. The palm tree is now behind us because it wouldn't fit in between us anymore. Somebody put a motorbike in the way. Jenna, welcome back. Thanks. So pictures and measurements is an interesting one because on the one hand, it shouldn't matter at all. Clearly how we look it has no relevance whatsoever at High Rocks. Um, 
apart from those rope pool photos, they're pretty important. But equally, we spend all day in our bodies, so it's important that we are happy with how they look. Yep. Agree? It's also an interesting one because we got married last year in the run-up to the wedding, you wanted to be a certain weight. And I said, if you hit that weight, but you looked worse, would you be happy? And you said, yes. Which is bonkers, isn't it? Because I couldn't understand that it would be hard to get to a lower weight and not look better. So basically, Jen thought, as long as that number on the scale is hit, everything else will take care of itself. As though, well, literally, you thought the number was the primary target. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting, as we'll see in a minute. So diving into these photos. So starting with the side by side, at first glance, there's not much difference. In fact, actually, putting the photographs to one side for a minute, this is an important point. If you are used to, as we are, looking at before and after photographs on Instagram and Facebook or wherever they pop up, it's important to remember 99% of them are rubbish. There is something off with most of them. If they are linked in any way with somebody selling something, then they're almost certainly off in some way. That might be that the lighting is rigged in the after one, or the person's worked out and got a pump, or they've spent days dehydrating, or it might be as significant as the length of time between before and after is simply deceitful. They spent six months getting like that, not six weeks. Or indeed, they're full of performance enhancing drugs and not the protein powder they're trying to flog you. So the vast majority of them are simply nonsense. And then the ones that are genuine, often it really comes down to fat loss. Fat loss you can see quite quickly, especially if there's a lot to lose over a short space of time. If you don't have a huge amount of fat to lose, you're looking for muscle development, and that takes a long time. So it is normal to not have a huge jump between photographs. That said, there is a jump. It's most obvious when we go side on, because your upper body is bigger, your posture's better, your arms, your arms got bigger by how much? Two, two centimeters? Yeah, uh, centimeter and a half, two centimeters. So two centimeters bigger on the arms, your leg, upper leg went up by about two centimeters again. A couple of centimeters again. Lower leg was up by about a centimetre. It's a good job you're wearing the same shorts because otherwise people would say you put on some sort of uh, fancy pants, I don't know, Kim Kardashian <laughs> butt lift short or something there. But if I had said to you at the start of all this, you are going to make your arms bigger, your legs bigger, and you're going to weigh more because you now weigh... Two kilograms more. Two kilograms more. If I had said that, bigger arms, bigger legs, two kilograms more, Let's go to the gym. You just said no. No. And yet, improved? Yes. I prefer my now picture to my before picture. And from the back, exactly the same. More shapely, more defined, despite being heavier. And from the front, again, exactly the same. Upper body, we know it's bigger because your arm size is up and there's two kilograms spread out on you somewhere. Yeah, for the three months only that we, I've been doing it, yeah, I'm happy. It will be interesting because, for example, your arms are two centimetres bigger. I wonder if there's a point where you'll go, oh, my arms are too big. Yes, there will be a point. Well, you say that, but you'd have said two centimetres was too big three months ago. Yes, I know. But if you put a photo in front of me and I had Arnold's arms, I'd say too big. So somewhere between here and Arnold. Yeah. Gun show inbound. <laughs> okay, so photographs all cool. You then had some questions put to us by some of the people over on my Patreon channel. So let me blast through those, because actually they're quite interesting. So first question was, has there been any positive impacts on your life outside of actually training in the gym? My energy levels, although at the start were down, are now definitely higher, so I have more energy when anything in life. I like the fact that I'm more fit and healthy outside of life, so just simple tasks like walking the dogs are just more enjoyable to have more energy in it. Um, Which is interesting because you're expending huge amounts of energy, but still then feel you have more energy when yeah. you need it. Yeah, it's cool. During the initial treadmill, okay, during your VO2 max test, you hit a mental wall. What have you done to push through that since? So I still hit the mental wall, um, but now when I hit it and I get to that heart rate zone, I now see it as a positive, like a more of a, I'm nailing this workout attitude. Yeah, almost looking forward to think to, to hit in the wall. Almost. Yeah. In fact, you have used Jen uses my zone. Yes. I use Garmin. Jen uses my zone, and it turns red. The graph turns red when you hit a, when you hit 
the same heart rate 90%. that you almost died on the VO2 max test on, you now look forward to, that's an achievement now, hitting that rather than a disaster, which is cool. What changes, if any, have you made to your diet? Uh, changes to my diet? Not exactly that many actually, uh, as long as I'm hitting enough protein and carbs, again depending on if I'm weightlifting or running, there isn't that many changes. I still pretty much eat all the things I used to before, Yeah. <laughs> maybe just a little bit more of everything. All we tend to do is look at macros a bit more. So. We eat the same things, but if, if the training's heavy, more protein. If the training is more endurance based, more carbon or enough carbohydrates. But we're not kind of going out of our way to eat particularly differently, I wouldn't okay. say. Does Jen really want to do this? How much is pressure from Mark? That's a question from your mum. <laughs> I, um, I wouldn't call it pressure from Mark, I'd say it's more encouragement. Gentle push. Gentle pushing. We are both quite good at pushing each other in the direction of doing something exciting and new if it benefits us, our relationship, our health, our Yeah, if one of us thinks happiness. this seems cool, then we'll push the other person to try it and vice versa. This is an interesting one. Uh, there are eight High Rocks events and a run. Which of the events is your favourite or events? For me, for example, be rowing. For you? I like the ones that include the weights. Farmers carry, sled, sled, push and pull, lunges. Goes with your new muscly arms. I like the sense of achievement that comes from moving Ooh. a weight from here to there. I like that. Good answer. What is your go-to training song? Do you have a go-to training song? No, not particularly. No, Jen tells Siri to just play random fitness rubbish normally. I normally just say play workout music. Yeah, and then just <laughs> nonsense plays. What is your favourite Rocky moment? When Rocky and Carl. Yeah, well, Rocky, it would be Rocky and Apollo Fine. or well, Sylvester and okay. Carl. Start again then. I'm not starting again because you don't know, do they? you can't differentiate right. between the actor and the Rocky character. I'm not and Apollo. Rocky and Apollo, okay. Running very happily along the beach together. They're focused, not happy, they're focused. Focused, It's a beautiful moment. That's your favourite moment? Because it makes me laugh. When I asked you earlier, you said it was, you said it was when Rocky asks Adrian out and makes a joke about the turtles in the pet shop. Changed my mind. Uh, at what point will Jen launch her own channel and ditch the old guy holding her back? That's a stupid question. At what point will Jane consider entering High Rocks as a singles? You're doing the singles in... January, Manchester. On your own? I am. I'm going to be filming you, screaming at you from the sidelines. Are you filming and then doing it yourself that day? I'm going to be filming you, you and your muscly arms. I'll be filming it all, screaming. And then do I have to film you? Then we swap over, yeah. 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 January, on her own. Very exciting. Um... Once Hyrox is complete, are you going to repeat the VO2 max test? Actually, we're going to try and do the VO2 max test again before Hyrox because in theory we should be at peak fitness, uh, at least for this part of our training block. So we are going to do another VO2 max test, definitely. How have your friends reacted to your decision to start training? Shocked, but... Shocked, they were shocked. But supportive of me doing it. Really? They didn't say stuff like, are you sure you want to do this? Is he not forcing you? No, that was just my mum. Okay. What would your advice be to people trying to encourage their partners to do what you have done? The translation of that is, my partner doesn't look after themselves. Uh, how can I trick her into doing so? I think is his, um, is his question. Make it fun. Do it together and remember that if you're already into fitness and they aren't, to do it at their level. Good point. Like we started off with cycling, kayaking at the weekends, taking the dogs, taking the picnic and yeah, step at a time. This is a good one. Is there anything on your bucket list to do in terms of challenges? High rocks, obviously we're going to do. Beyond high rocks, what oh, else? I want to complete the other two Spartans, the sprint and the super. We've done the super, oh. you want to do sprint and beast, so more Spartan races. 
And I want to do the Superhuman Games mixed doubles. Superhuman Games. And I'm doing Spartan Decker Fit in a couple of months. And you might have a go at that if it comes to the UK. If it comes to the UK. Good stuff. Uh, does your diet involve... Does the diet involve cheat meals? Does your diet involve cheat meals? I eat a lot of cheat meals. Yeah. What's your go-to cheat meal? Oh. Wagamamas? Wagamamas, yeah. Yeah. A lot of Wagamamas, a lot of cheese. And donuts, obviously. Obviously, goes without saying. Um, last one. Who's going to record your mixed doubles race? Uh, because you'll be busy, obviously. Okay. Um, my son, uh, Joshua, who actually filmed our simulation recently he's going to film it uh i'll put his photograph up if you spot him at one of the events walk up to him and say loving your work uh, you will blow his tiny tiny mind if he thinks he's slightly famous so do that it'll be very funny okay i think that's it for updates you are bigger heavier happier fitter stronger i mean what the list goes on i'm running out of Three months is good so far. Yeah. You're welcome. I'm welcome. Well, it was my idea, really, wasn't it? I think it's my hard work. Yeah, but, 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 yeah, well, sort of, but I said that you should do it. You should, you know, direct your hard work here rather than... Okay, so more. I should take the credit for the whole of the YouTube thing, then. Right, we're done. Okay, that is it. There'll be another update video coming just before we race, which is now not far away, October, uh, less than three months away getting quite exciting. So hopefully some more improvement to be seen between now and then. Uh, I'm expecting the improvements to be more in relation to things like how fast Jen's doing the events and so on. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that some of those newbie gains, these big chunks being knocked off the park run, um, th that can't continue, surely. If it does continue, um, <laughs> she's gonna be faster than me. I hope you found it interesting. As always, any comments, any questions, stick them down in the comments and give the video a like. In fact, definitely give the video a like because Jen's mum is going to be rounding up all of her friends to give it a thumbs down. So I got to balance that out somehow. Mm -hmm.